Hi, and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this lecture, we're going to talk about types of programming languages. But I think an important question before then is, why are there many programming languages? Why don't we just have one? Well, some programming languages are better at some things. For example, C++ is faster than Java, but it is more difficult to program in C++. Other languages are older, and this means that they are maybe using obsolete technology, or you cannot use them in newer systems, or a wide variety of reasons why older languages might be worse, so new languages keep replacing old languages all the time. Not all the time, maybe once every 10 years or so. There is two ways to group languages. One is their level, and the other one is their uh, whether they're compiled or not. Let's talk about their level. Level refers to how close to binary code a language is. Let's take a look at an example program in binary code. This program multiplies 750 by 2, giving the answer 1500. As you can see, it is quite a complicated program. This is written for one of the first, actually the first computer that accepted um, binary program input. And it is quite an old, an old system. So, okay, this is not particularly easy to read. So let's take a look at, at a low-level language that is not binary code, but it is the lowest level language after binary code. This is assembly. Assembly is a set of instructions that mean something in binary. It was used to save programmers time instead of having to write binary code. This means that the code you're about to see can directly translate into binary code. And there we have it. So this is a bit more a bit easier to read, although you will not directly understand what it means. You can see that there's start where the program is likely gonna start. There's a value 750. If you knew the program multiply 750 by 2, then this gives you a clue as to what this means. There's num1 and my sum that, if you're English, and you could see these as potentially two variables, or two things that are going to store values. And that's that. So these things you will not understand, but you'll know they refer to num1 and num1 and my sum, my sum, my sum. So something is going on here with the variables. SDP could stand for stop, and it actually does. This ends the program. So, it is more readable, but not easy. What I mean with that it was used to save programmers time and that it means something in binary, I mean that LDN num1 translates to a string of binary code directly. Each line translates to one line in binary code. So initially assembly is low level because it really doesn't do anything for you. It's just, LDN is just a mnemonic for a set of zeros and ones. So let's take a look at what a high-level language might look like. Let's take a look at Java, which is the language we're going to be learning in this course. And you will see how it is actually a bit easier. This uh, line does the same thing as the whole of the program. Um, and what it does, it creates an integer, which is a whole number. It calls it mysum. So you have a mysum variable. If you've ever done uh, algebra in, in mathematics or something like that, you'll see the mysum is just a, a, a variable of type integer, which means it can only hold a whole number. And then this equals 750 multiplied by 2. So you, you create an integer variable called mysum that holds a value 1500. And this does the same thing as the other program does. Okay, so we have binary code, we have assembly, and then we have Java. And as you can see, they get easier over time. So what does it mean to be a low-level language? A low-level language is difficult to read, whereas high-level languages are more abstract and they do things for you, and also contain natural language elements. For example, Java, the, the, the language we will be learning in this course, contains many English words that make it easier to read and easier to understand. In addition to that, I said that they do lots of things for you. What I mean with this is that those binary and assembly languages were so long because you had to tell the processor when to stop doing things. You had to tell the processor where to get the data from. In Java, it takes one line because it does all of that for you. And then the other grouping is whether languages are compiled or interpreted. So there are two main types. And compiled languages are converted to binary code directly. This means you get the source code, for example, in, in a language called C++. 
you run it through a program called the compiler, and out comes binary code, zeros and ones. The computer can only understand binary code, so this is perfect. You give the computer the binary code, and then it runs through it really quickly. Interpreted languages can be translated into a different language, or directly executed. What I mean with this is that you'll get your source code in an interpreted language, and you'll have to run that source code through a program, and this program will communicate with the computer and with the processor. Your code doesn't get converted into binary code directly. This is slower because you're depending on a program to communicate with the computer and not giving the computer the instructions directly. So why would you want to use an interpreted language? Well, I'll come to that in a second when we, when we talk about the language we're going to be learning. So how do they work? Compiled languages are converted or compiled to binary code, and the computer can then run this binary code, as we've agreed. So it's something like this. It's fairly simple. You get your source code, you give it to a compiler, you get binary code, and then you give that to a computer. Interpreted languages are run by a program that interacts with the computer. And this extra step, the interpreter, this program that interacts with the computer, instead of giving the source code direct, the binary code directly to the computer, this extra step makes interpreted languages slower because you're depending on another program. And it goes like this. You get your source code at the top left, and then you can translate it into a simpler language, or you can directly interpret it. It's up to the program's design. Um, and then you interpret that. Java, in our case, is the language we're going to be learning, and Java is translated into bytecode. You do not have to learn bytecode or anything like that. We will only learn Java in this course. Um, and, and this makes it easier to, to um, interpret. And this bytecode is uninterpreted. The program that interprets this is called the Java Virtual Machine. Java Virtual Machine is a program that is installed in many computers and many other devices. For example, your Android phones or your Mac or Windows or Linux. All those computers have the Java Virtual Machine, usually by default. Um, this means it comes installed with your system. So all those systems can run your Java programs. However, Java is a fairly slow language because of this, because it has this interpreter and it needs it. Java is fairly slow compared to at least other compiled languages. And also Java programs take a lot of space. What I mean with this is that when you send someone your program, you're not actually only sending your program, you're also sending a lot of the Java language that your program depends on and that the Java virtual machine needs and things like that. So you're actually sending quite a large chunk of data when you send someone a Java program. That's why Java programs take a lot of space. However, the benefit is that Java is fully portable. You write your Java program in your Mac, and then you can run it in Windows, Linux, Android, or anywhere you want. And this makes Java brilliant for many projects. Um, and this is why we're using it as well, so that the things I write here on my Mac, you write the same in your Windows computer, and it just works. So stick with me. Let's go into the next video, and let's keep moving.